Good afternoon, traders. It's Bill Baruch with Blue Line Futures, and this is what's moving. Saw another strong risk on move across asset classes. Equity markets finished higher, and the metals finished higher. And that's what I, really what I want to talk about and hit on today. First, real quick with the S&P and, and the other equity markets uh, finishing strongly today. Overall, consumer confidence much better than expected. Really, everybody's ignoring the PMI data, uh, but that consumer confidence number coming in strongly in the face of the re-emerging re coronavirus in June and also in the face of the riots and protests. And there's a lot of questions about the economy in general. You're seeing strong consumer confidence, and that was the backbone of today's rally. Um, overall, you had Fed Chair Powell, U.S. Treasury Secretary Mnuchin speaking, um, a lot of the same. And you know, overall, Powell still concerned Treasury Secretary Mnuchin thinks we're coming out of this strongly. Um, but again, really, the market's focused on whether it, it be a Sunday night low, whether it be a lower, lower death rate, not rising with the steepening virus curve. Um, a number of reasons. Again, you're seeing this market across the board risk on. And, um, you know, we've got to mention it, too. It's the Fed-driven rally. You, you have a, the, the Fed introducing their corporate bond window, a corporate debt window, uh, buying everything from Apple, uh, you know, across the board, other great companies, Berkshire Hathaway. So um, Fed's supporting this, but there's a lot of other narratives out there supporting this, too. So it, it just not, it's not just one. Um, but first, real quick, let's take a look. Before, before we dive into the metals, this is going to be all about the metals here. Show you where we're looking at uh, in the S&P. Uh, you got some good resistance to take a look at. Um, as we close strongly today, trend line resistance right about 31.25 or so here, uh, 31.30. And we're get, coming into these lower highs. So path least resistance on this move today becomes there. You know, I am certainly not saying to stretch and buy this, the S&P and look for that being your target. But uh, you know, if you're looking to fade it, you do have this this red bar down here that does bring some resistance, some good sell volume that, that came in at that point. Uh, again, a lot of resistance where you know we chewed through today, and then you got a lot of resistance up here as it still remains the consolidation pattern. Now to what we've seen here with the metals today, just tremendous, tremendous session. This is gold. We've been showing you this chart for a while. We've been showing you this inverted head and shoulders breakout, this consolidation pattern here. And this is the continuous gold, not just the August gold, but the continuous gold where it got above this trend line, retested a major three-star support on Friday, and it is now breaking out new highs here above 1800 today. And that paves the path least resistance higher. So you now ask yourself, where is gold going to go? I first must remind you that our narrative is always, you do not want to be chasing gold when everybody's screaming gold for gold. That's when you want to be capitalizing on gold that you already have. I'm not saying it's too late to buy here, but what you don't want to do is be buying gold at 1820 overnight when Asia opens and rips higher. So you got to be careful. You got to be mindful of where you're buying and you got to be mindful of where you stop because the higher this market goes, seems to get more volatility at times, and you got to be ready for those swings across all metals. So now what I'm looking at here is this consolidation range with a high of 1788 and a low of 1666. Whereas that give you gives you about a range reversal up to 1910. And guess what? 1920, 1923.70 was the all-time high. Really pointing for a breakout from here up into this highs, 1910. Now you have the October 2012 highs, 1798. We got above there. Got the this lower high of February 1792 out above there. You do now have this snapback November 2011 high, uh, which failed 1804.40. It's testing into that right now. Got to get above there, and I think you will see Asia hours getting really, really excited about gold. We've seen it before. They chase it higher. Silver too. So let's take a look at the silver high, silver number here, uh, silver chart. You're getting this 50-day moving average finally moving across out above the 200-day. Been talking about this for weeks. It's going to provide a tailwind. Looks like as soon as that July contract fell off the board, and we always talk about these expirations, paves a path of least resistance directionally, and it removes the ceiling that was there as repositioning comes in, options expiration, all this good stuff when it, that that comes on these big contract expirations. The July silver contract expired yesterday, or at least it didn't roll out of it yesterday. It's just in delivery now. Uh, paves a path higher, and we do have a ceiling here $19. But what I'm also looking at, as this 50-day crosses above the 200, and you get that tailwind silver here, uh, you do have a trend line about 1950. So there's going to be some some resistance there. But let's also not forget, silver made a new low in March as the deflationary fears were were rampant in amid you know the co the worst of COVID-19. So 
I like to look at 382 retracements. I always talk about 382 retracements. I don't trade on one technical indicator. I don't trade on two technical indicators. I like to see multiple technical indicators align several times over. So what do I see here? I see these previous lows in silver aligning with now this new 382 retracement that was created from the low in March. I see this big move down here in April 2013. It really honestly gives you, if silver can get and stay out above 1950, get out above that Brexit at July 2016 high, I don't see a reason why silver cannot make a move at 25 to 26 bucks. I think that is in the cards here. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. Of course not today. Of course not tomorrow. Uh, maybe not over the next month. But I think as we look into, I've been saying that the metals need to break out now. Their timeline is shrinking. August, September is where they're, uh, they start to become a little more dull. October, November, and they pick back up second half of December. Silver's got to do this within that time frame here, uh, and otherwise you, you can have some other factors working towards it. But overall, we love what we're seeing, love the central bank liquidity out there, the, all this stimulus, whether it's the Fed, whether it's the ECB, the you know all these banks, Bank of Japan, every single central bank, every single government's throwing out fiscal policy measures. This is going to devalue those currencies against gold, against silver, and it's going to pave a path least resistance higher. And we do think that if they can get out above 1950, you're seeing it move to 25, 26 bucks in silver. Again, it could take a little bit of time, but silver can move two or three dollars in a day, and it will surprise you sometimes. The other metals too, you can't ignore them. Platinum it is having a nice move here. It's this, this sort of descending wedge potentially breaking out above there now we don't like platinum as much as silver uh it has certainly lagged the others look at this it just really it is still at the bottom end of this sort of breakdown area this trend line can't really get out above it it's severely lagged gold over in recent years and remember platinum oh outpriced gold for much of you know, much of history and you got this moving platinum platinum's record high 2300 so Really, it's got to get out above this trend line. It's get out of, got to get out above $1,000. It has a way to go, but there are some constructive technicals there for platinum. And in the upside target for platinum long term, $1,200. I think you got to look at that 3A2 there, this little consolidation where we're broken down from. So that's what we're looking at there. Again, we're not looking at moves today, today and tomorrow. We're looking at what can happen here if this breakout plays out. And then palladium. Palladium has been you know, the, the gym of all the metals. And it, it, what it do? Twenty eight hundred bucks. It, it has had hundred, two hundred, three hundred, three hundred dollar ranges for many days on on end. Uh, some of the volume, sorry, some of the volatility is slipping a bit. Uh, now you you have this sort of sideways consolidation broke down below here. You know we we talked about this 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 wedge pattern that was building and you know what it broke down through it it did not fall apart it actually stayed pretty constructive these lows were matched so now you have these trend lines crossing the apex of this area just above 2000 so 2000 is gonna be a tough one for platinum i'm sorry for palladium and then you also have this previous top here 2050. now again we think gold and silver are, are going to be the ones that that really drive this uh gold and silver like i said and platinum is looks constructive Palladium is a very big contract, a lot of large swings. It's already very, pretty highly priced. Um, they're both going to, platinum and, and, and uh, palladium seem to depend on risk on much more than gold at times, but they're all going to be tied to those deflationary fears. If for some reason COVID-19 uh, starts to pick up a bit, you've seen those days where gold can go lower. So you do want to stay, um, you know, vi you know, stay on the lookout for those type of days, but ultimately too, you know, really, as gold has held ground, um, you know, again, it's it's moving higher with the equity market. So it doesn't mean that it's just only a safe haven here. It, you can obviously see it's a risk on move, gold and silver working together. Again, we're here to talk about all these levels. You want to talk about what you're doing in the market, some options, ways to play it too. We're here to help. 312-278-0500. Email us, info at bluelinefutures.com for questions. Remember, futures trading involves substantial risk of loss. It is not suitable for all investors.